G'day everybody and welcome back. Today in front of us we have the Hauer Mini Action chambered in 300 Blackout. We've done our final, uh, our final bit of load development, load testing, and our final zero, and a bit of point of impact testing, uh, which I thought I would share with you. I found it a little bit interesting. Um, quite as you had a little variation there are between different, different bits and pieces here and there, but we'll, we'll work out, we'll uh, get into that down the track. I haven't posted for a little while. I have been as sick as five dogs. Uh, I could, you can probably hear the last of this chest infection in my voice. The last uh, week and a half, of it sounded like I'm on two packets of Winfield Red a day, and it's just, it's no, been no good at all. Can be absolutely no good at all. But we're sort of, we're coming around the corner now, so we'll, uh, we'll see what we can get out of this. All right, so stick around, and uh, we'll go from there. Rightio, here we go. Let's have a look at uh, all the little ingredients we've got for these things. Firstly, we'll look at the brass. It's not 300 blackout brass, that's cut down 2D3 brass. I've cut it down. Try to take a shot of that. I've cut it down, I've put it through the dies, just reshaped the necks. Um, a little bit time consuming that process, but it's worth it because you can actually get some brass out of it and it gives your old 2D3 brass a second lease of life. I mean, if you've got, they've got cracked necks and that, you're not using the necks, so you cut them off and throw them away and start again. These have all been fire formed now. Um, I've annealed them the whole lot, give them all the polishing. They come up all right. Some people say they give less performance. Look, I haven't had an issue with it, haven't had a feeding issue, haven't had a loading issue, pressure issue, nothing. So I'm happy with that. And besides the fact that um, actual 300 blackout brass at the moment is pretty scarce on the ground, and when you can get it, if and when you can get it, it will more than likely cost you one arm, one leg, and the soul of your firstborn son and possibly a kidney. So there we go, not willing to do that. Small rifle magnum primers. Uh, these are what is recommended um, to shoot these things. I've actually used standard small rifle primers with these and I've found really no appreciable difference between the two. So I think you could probably flip from one to the other without too much of an issue at all. I, I honestly did not notice any great big difference, okay? We're gonna throw it all with ADI 2207 powder. 2205 is uh, the recommended powder for this. But 2207 will have to do because 2205 at the moment is about as rare as unsweetened unicorn piss. So you're not going to get any. And anybody who's got it wants, they're trying to sell it for stupid prices. Um, so we're stuck with 2207 and it works fine. It works fine. So, all right, what have we uh, projectiles? Now I've loaded them all out, so I've got no loose ones of these. Hornady 125 grain SSTs. There we go, get him focused, there he is. There he is with the little cannula there. He's fine. Now we've got the horn of the, uh, sorry, the spear 125 grain hollow points. Little tiny little hollow point there. And we've got the spear 130 grain hollow points. Now he's got the big point there. We'll have a, have a bit of a look, see if we can get them both in shot. There he is. There he is. Five grains more, but Big different sort of hollow point. They're those big 130s. I use them in my 308, and I've used them with great success on pigs and that. They're 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 a great they're a great projectile. People say hollow points are, are no good for my hunting. I you know, I just say bullshit. I always call bullshit on that. And we had a couple of these left. The old horn of the uh, sorry the spear, 150 grain, flat base soft point spitzers. They're fine. Um, Again, load them, load them in 308, 306, etc., etc. Um, probably light 300 wind mag, I suppose. They come out with uh, with the 150s, and um, the 180 grain flat base soft point spitzers, big stone. That's him. Okay. And they're actual factory loadings you can get with those with those um, weight projectiles. I didn't worry about the supersonics. Not going to worry about that. So. I'll do my load disclaimer now. Right, I usually get my information from my two loading Bibles. Here's the Nick Harvey book in conjunction with the uh, ADI book. The ADI book you'll find, um, it's pretty much all online now. There's, you know, they're starting to include blackout because it's a, a new fangly dangly uh, cartridges. Not much for the blackout uh, in either of those with the 2207 powder until you get up to the 180 grain projectiles. What you've got to do is find out the, uh, work out your powder equivalencies and you, that's, that's a Google job. Your, your powder, your ADI powder equivalencies. I've used the Hogden powder, Hogden powder, uh, American powder, which funnily enough is manufactured 
by ADI. Such is the ludicrousness of the firearms industry. But anyway, I digress. And then, then I went to the, I went to the Spear site, Hornady site, Sierra site, get bullet weights, it gets you close. I've had no pressure issues. So there we go. Follow, and as I say, with loading, I load for me and me only. My firearms are my firearms only, and what works in my firearms may not necessarily work in yours or anyone else's firearms. What I do is a guide only. Do not take it as gospel. If you are going to develop loads, get all the stuff from manufacturers' recommendations. Start low and walk up the ladder slowly. Any pressure signs, stop. Pressure signs including flattening primers, tight bolt lifts, that's, that's all pressure. That's all, over, all overloads, overstretched brass, whatever. That's where you're starting to run into trouble. If you want to fill these things up and turn them into absolute rocket ships, that's on you and not me. Rightio, results time. Now, I haven't measured these things. These are shot at 50 yards. This is a, this is a close quarters gun. Uh, this is walking around creeks and scrub and in, in, in stubble field, etc., etc. Walking around in the grass. Pigs, etc. pop up. It's quick snap shooting, bang, bang. You're not after absolute pinpoint accuracy because you're just not going to get it. Okay? So, but it's what the gun's designed, the rifle rather, is designed to do. And so I'm happy with the way I've, I've sided it. Now, I did the, uh, I redid that whole accuracy testing thing with the Magnum primers. As stated, I found no discernible, noticeable difference between the two. So I didn't really feel the need to put the same, uh, put basically the same video up. And, and go through all that rhubarb again for, 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 no, for no real gain. So um, what I've done is I, I, I cross-referenced the two and with each of the projectiles, I picked out the load that I thought um, would, what, what load would best suit those projectiles and, and had a look at both of them over both days and I came up with these. I sighted the rifle in with 18.4 grains of the uh, 2207 and that's with the spear, 125 grain hollow points, the little ones with the skinny hollow point on, little tiny dot on them. So that's not too bad. There was a bit of wind up when I uh, <laughs> when I sighted that one in, and I was trying to dodge a bit of a storm. Um, after that, I went away. I did shoot another group with it, and it sort of moved it over that way there. So I'm, I'm happy enough with that. That's fine. That's fine. So, and as you'll see. I've got three different projectiles that are loaded with 18.4 grains, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so here we go. I'll make this work without dropping everything. Okay, 150 grain spear soft point. Now he's got 17.9 grains of uh, 2 to 07 in him. That's not too bad. You're gonna hit any, at 50, 60, 70 yards, you're gonna hit anything you aim at with that. Not an issue. Absolutely not an issue, those, that, so. Happy with that, so that's a load you can use. We'll move over to our 125 grain uh, SSTs. Gee, that's pretty terrible, isn't it? You know, you'd, you'd take that all day long. This is 18.4 grains, same as that one. Different projectile, same load. So he's, he is basically where you'd, where you'd want him sighted. So if you're using, using that projectile, you wouldn't touch him at all. You wouldn't touch that at all. That's just, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We get down to our spear, 130 grain hollow points. The little, with the big fat hollow point and the one I use in 308 for pigs. That's three, that's two in that hole there. You wouldn't touch that either. So the 130s and the 125 are basically the same. If you look where the point of impact is, that is basically the same. You could go from projectile to projectile without an issue there. Wouldn't even change your, change your, your, your zero or anything. So, You'd, you'd shoot that all day long too. And here's where it got interesting. <coughs> Pardon me. The 180s. Now, I wouldn't use these. I think the 180s are starting to get a bit slow. They're big, giant house bricks. If they hit something, they're going to stay hit. But yeah, I think you're giving away a little bit of velocity, but no reason why you wouldn't. See, that's not foul either. That's the worst fly you're ever going to get. That's got 17.4 grains in, so that's a full grain less than the other smaller projectiles. Um, if that's the worst fly you're ever going to get in your life, that's yeah, all right. That's all right. So, yeah, look, I'm not going to use him. I had a couple of projectiles left, so I, and I had a spare target on the board, so I thought I'd just do it for shits and giggles. And, uh, yeah, so that came out all right. So with the 18.4s, 
you can use any of the 130 hollow points, the 125 hollow points, or the 125 SSTs. And if you want to go the bigger ones down the track, that's what you can get. You can use your 150 grain spare soft points. So you've got four loads there you can use, easy. So good as gold. I'm going to uh, wrap this one up now. Rightio. How many action 300 blackout? Like it. Like it a lot. Um, great little rifle. Light, easy to throw around, easy to swing. Comes up really, really nicely. And in this caliber, in this caliber 300 blackout, very, very, very mild recoil. Quite easy to shoot. This would be a really good carry around uh, rifle um, for a small lady or a, a you know, young child, you know, young child or a young fella or whatever. Um, who don't want to carry big rifles around, which is fair enough, or old bastards like me. But anyway, um, everything about it's good. I, I, I like everything about this rifle, and it shoots really, really well. Um, little cheapy little scope on it. You know, you can go and spend three hundred and fifty odd dollars on this scope. You can do that, or you can go and spend seven hundred dollars. I do this. I got three hundred fifty bucks to spend on other things. And the joy of this one, in a brass shot, you can make your own brass. Not hard. So, uh, and the amount of powder and everything it uses, you run it forever on one kilo of powder, and um, you don't have to use expensive projectiles, you can use cheapies, because you, you're not shooting big distances. So, like it a lot, like it a lot. Um, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Um, I bought this whole, this whole uh, outfit from the barn at Oakey, from Campbell Street at Oakey. Really nice people to deal with. You buy it with a, uh, the standard house stock on it. I purchased the... Uh, I purchased a little um, a little chassis stock separately. Easy install. I've done a video on that one. Easy to do. You do that yourself. Yeah. No, no, none of this putting these rifles together requires any gunsmithing whatsoever. It's not real hard. So um, I suggest you go and grab yourself one. They've still got a few in stock and they're pretty good people to deal with. So I'll put this one to bed now. If you like it, like the video, subscribe to my channel. That'd be really good. Give me the thumbs up. I really like that sort of stuff. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down twice, as they say. But uh, until next time, tell your wife, tell your girlfriend. You can tell them both. It don't matter to me. You just go two clicks up. Ta-da.